Hello everyone, welcome back. If you are new here, then hi, I'm Nicole Anderson and this is Beauty in the Brains. I talk about horror novels, horror stories, and like today, I talk about horror folklore. Oral history is the majority of history. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Jewish folklore of the Golem. I feel immensely privileged that I was able to go to Prague in the Czech Republic on a school trip. This was a few years back. But yeah, I got to be in the Jewish quarter and I got to go to the synagogue where the famed rabbi associated with the golem took place. I even got to visit the rabbi's grave. It was a very spiritual experience for me. Prague is such a magical place. When you are in the Jewish quarter, it feels like you're going back in time. I think this is because all of the architecture is so well preserved, like barely anything is a replica. I was just in shock, like when you're looking at a building and it's a gothic building, it's not just like a gothic revival building. Sorry, we're gonna have a little bit of architecture geek time here. When you're looking at a true gothic building, the air just leaves your body. It's so mesmerizing. Fun fact, Prague was the least bomb city during World War II. But don't get that confused with that it didn't have its own horrors or that it was a city that saw less destruction because there was a lot of horror, trust me. But this tale does not take place during World War II. In fact, you might be pretty surprised at how old the golem tale goes back. What color do I want to do today? I'm wearing like this little farmer girl thing. I look like I should be on a shtetl. The story goes as far back as Genesis, like as in the Bible. Adam, or in Hebrew, Adam, which in Hebrew means human, is considered by folklorists and some Talmudic scholars as being the very first golem. The most well-known story of the golem is don't play God, don't do it. I strongly believe that without the golem, we would not have Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. There's a lot of people that agree with me on that, but there's no like solid backup claim that Mary Shelley, you know, was familiar with the golem story. I mean, it's one of the most popular stories in the world. So you could say that, of course, she had to have been familiar with it, but there's just no concrete evidence that she outright claimed that she was inspired by the golem story. But it is very Frankenstein-esque. During the Middle Ages, the rabbis of Europe were trying to create golem and they studied what is the book of creation or in hebrew the sefer yetzirah but this is more so just part of the tale and there is no hard evidence that rabbis were truly trying to actually do this in judaism there's many names for god i like to think of them as nicknames because it is said that his real name is unpronounceable and also it's just like a huge no-no to say his name out loud that's like a, a whole thing so one of his cute little nicknames is Shem. But Shem, the word, well, it's not really like a name or a word. Oh, how do I explain this? He's got a lot of names. And Shem, translated into English, means the explicit name. So apparently, Shem is like a clue in the Kabbalah, which by the way, the Kabbalah is a Jewish mystic text. Side note, Judaism is basically the world's largest book club. Let me tell you, we have way more books than you could ever read in your whole life. Anyway, Shem. The word Shem would be written down on a card, and that card would then be slipped into the inanimate clay golem's mouth, and once the card was in its mouth, you would wait overnight and then BAM! You got yourself a golem, baby. I think I'll do green today. Green as in golem. Not all golem tales are alike. There's a very famous one by the brothers Grimm, which describes the word emet, which in Hebrew means truth. Emet would be written on, wait, how would it go on the forehead? So this way, on the forehead of the clay golem. And that is what would bring the golem to life. This is a way darker color than I thought it would be. And then to deactivate the golem, you would remove the aleph letter, which is basically the equivalent of A. Um, so you would remo remove the aleph, and then that would just say met, which in Hebrew means death. Um, there's a Kabbalistic sort of view into this and that the only truth we have in life is death, which is so macabre. I, I love it. It's so dark. The Brothers Grimm tale is, I would say, the most popular tale just because they had such a wide range and for a very long time, people just did not want to read stories written by Jews. The golem with the image of Emmet written on the forehead is the most predominant image when you look up images of golem. 
you know, I'm not bashing on the Brothers Grimm. I do love their fairy tales. I grew up with their fairy tales, but the PC version of their fairy tales, uh, which, you know, I think are much more suitable for children of today. I do think that age appropriate horror is very much necessary for children. However, if you do look up the original Brothers Grimm fairy tales in their true unadulterated form, oh, that's a whole lot of anti Semitic. <laughs> like, yikes. I mean, profoundly anti-Semitic. And it just explains a lot of how the Jews were viewed in Europe during the Brothers Grimm lifetime. And these stories include The Jew Amongst Thorns, The Good Bargain, The Bright Sun Will Bring It Into the Light of Day, so it's a strange title, The Jew's Stone, and last but not least, The Big Whopper, The Girl Who Was Killed by Jews. It's disgusting. So I highly suggest that if you do read folk tales on the golem, you know, if you want to look into the historical aspect of the anti-Semitism of the Brothers Grimm, go ahead and read it. Just beware, it is very disturbing. So I would suggest that you read golem tales that are written by Jewish people. Think of it as how Things Fall Apart by Chino Achebe is a much more honest and honorable read than Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. Prague in the 16th century, there was a rabbi called Rabbi Yudah Lo Ben Bezalo. He made a clay golem. He got the clay from the Vlatava River in Prague to protect the Jewish quarter from anti-Semitic attacks. Side note, I highly suggest that you look into medieval anti-Semitism because it is in so many ways the root of what explains anti-Semitism even in today's modern Europe. Like the whole idea of that all oh, Jews are really good with money, the whole idea of that Jewish people are all bankers. No, stop saying that. That's a made-up thing from the Middle Ages. It's not true. Stop. So the golem protected the Jewish quarter, and it was all hunky-dory, right? Not at all. The golem was working very well at first because the rabbi would always remember to remove his Shem card for Shabbat. But he forgot to remove the Shem card one Shabbat night. This is where our story begins. There are multiple different tales of what the golem does when he doesn't get to rest on Shabbat, which for most people is Sunday. Something got mistranslated and people now do it on Sunday. Yeah, so my favorite tale of the golem is that the golem goes freaking nutso and starts killing everybody in its path because he can't tell the difference between the good people and the bad people. There is another story where the golem doesn't kill anybody, but instead falls in love with the rabbi's daughter, which the rabbi is like totally not chill with. And he doesn't let the golem be with his daughter, and then the golem goes on a rampage. But either way, no matter how the story is told, it always ends with the rabbi removing the Shem card or taking away the Aleph letter on its head right in front of the old new synagogue in Prague. The golem becomes dried clay, and his limbs fall off, and the rabbi collects the limbs, and he puts it into the attic of the old new synagogue. When I was in that synagogue, I was like, this is a beautiful synagogue. I felt spiritual. I felt I was, I was jiving. So we're done with our little tour, but we're kind of hanging out in this little corridor area. And they're like, oh, look, this is the mikvah. And I was like, that's a very nice mikvah. Mikvah is a Jewish ritual bath. And I'm just like standing there staring at this mikvah and I get like this weird sensation and I just look up and there is like the oldest attic door I've ever seen in my life and I just get chills down my body. I'm like, fuck. It was wild. It was really wild. I was like, that's, that's the attic. My art history teacher was the only person who was stopping me from Lara Croft tomb raidering my ass up there. In art history, we are taught that statues can be very dangerous power symbols. And I think that is what the golem is. Ever since the 5th century BC, there have been narratives of statues coming to life that become out of human control. And this is where to this day, we have the narrative of AI controlling itself. There are many modern day interpretations of the golem in shows and movies. My favorite is the X-Files episode Kaddish, which Kaddish is the prayer of the dead, which is season four, episode 15. There are also lots of comic books on the golem. 
and it is believed that the thing of the Fantastic Four is inspired by the golem. There's also a horror movie called The Golem, and it is off the fucking wall. I highly suggest that you watch it. I think it was made recently, like 2019, but beware because it is indeed horrifying. I want more Jewish horror movies. I do hope that the world opens up back to normal again sometime soon so that I can go back to Prague and so that all of you can go visit Prague too. Let's see what I look like without this head wrap on. My hair is drying. It's definitely not fully dry, but let's just see. I feel like I definitely need some more help on the hair department. This makeup look is fucking wild. I don't know how we got here, but here we are. If you like this video, then click that like button and do consider subscribing. Also, check out all the other videos on my channel while you're already here. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you have a great day. And how many weeks do we have until spring? Two. Two weeks till spring? Is that what that says? I don't have my glasses on. Anyway, it's almost spring. It's almost Passover. I'm ready for it all. Well, not really. I still have cleaning to do. I have no idea what I'm going to cover in my next week's video, but there will be something, so don't you worry. I will be back. I'll be back for all of you. Oh, also, before you go, I hope you liked the Stephen King movie to book in a nutshell video. Next week, I will be doing the same thing, but this time for Misery. So once again, thank you very much. Bye.